to Camille, and now I'm going to botch up this pronunciation. I know Dardanes, right. correct? Thank you. Hey guys, namaste, welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is Amisha Singh Chauhan, and if you're looking for something fun, and mysterious. Then you're at the right place, so do not forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon so that every time I'm here with a new case to talk about, you'll get to know about it. So, today we will be talking about the vanishing of Camille Dardane's Dodson. I think it is the first time that I'm actually covering a case of a missing person. So anyways, let's just get started. We don't know about the exact date when Camille got missing or she vanished from Las Vegas, Nevada. She was working in a strip club and nobody knows the exact date that she went missing. In fact, around seven months later, when the mother Barbara and the seven-year-old daughter of Camille shifted to Las Vegas, they got to know that Camille was missing for a very long time and nobody had any idea where she was. Camille was born on 23rd of February 1964. She was born in upper middle class family of Chicago. She was a brilliant student, a really beautiful girl who was an all-rounder actually. She did ballet dancing for nine years. She was also a semi-pro ice skater. She was getting straight A's in all her subjects and was a really matured, intelligent girl. Nobody who had any connection with her ever thought that she would end up this way. Now, when she turns 21, she gets really interested in news of Gary Dodson. She got really captivated by him and some might even say that it was love at first sight. So every time Gary Dodson was on news, she would straight up go near the television and would be really interested as to what was going on in his case. So for the ones who don't know about Gary Dodson, he was an infamous convicted rapist whose accuser recanted her story and said that this entire time she was lying and Gary Dodson was indeed innocent. In the very same year, he was released. He was acquitted of the crimes for which he had actually spent some years in the prison. Now, what happened is that when during the trials, when Camille got to know that there was going to be a public clemency hearing, so she was really eager to see him personally. And you know, every time she would go near the television when he was on the News, her friends would ask her questions like oh my god why are you so interested do you know him and she would reply no I don't know him but I will and indeed that happened so during the public hearing everyone witnessed when Camille went straight ahead to Gary Dodson with a white carnation in her hands and gave him to it now she got Gary's eyes immediately and when Gary was released in 1985 they immediately started dating and eventually got married in the same year very soon they also had their first and their only child child Ashley Dodson. Now what happened is the accuser, the girl who accused him uh, falsely, she wrote a book called Forgive Me and she gave all the rights and the money she got from the book to Gary Dodson. So they were financially strong. Everything was going really well. It was like a dream come true. Some might even say a fairy tale. Everyone were talking about it. In fact, they even made it together to Good Morning America. So like I said, everything was perfect. It was just like Camille wanted. She fell in love with this man and the man loved her back. So what went down was the fact that eventually Gary got into alcohol. Whenever he would drink, he would get really violent and abusive with Camille. There came this one instance where he even threatened her to kill their daughter, Ashley. Now, when this happened, she went to the police. Police got involved and later on, Gary accepted that he said that before Camille could take her daughter, he would kill her. Now, what happened is usually in these kind of domestic violence cases, we see that the wives, they take back their complaints and that exactly happened. Camille took back her complaint, justifying saying that her husband was far away from a criminal and they were in a rough situation where he was really drunk, she was tired, Ashley was crying and eventually it got into the blunder that happened. Now after that, we would think that things were going really well, but unfortunately that did not happen. He got into a lot of DUIs and drunken bar fights. There were a lot of allegations against him. Now this is the point where she decides that, no, this is too much, I have to take a break, and she separates from him. At least she tries to. Even after so much persisting and trying to break off things with him, Gary would insist and would often threaten her. There was this one time where she actually had to call the police and then only he would leave. He was even arrested for trespassing. Now what happened 
distances so as to protect herself and her young baby Ashley, she decides to shift to Las Vegas. And that is when she went to Nevada. Now, what happens is that when she shifts to Nevada, Ashley has no higher education. She really does not have any quality work experience. And here she is, a single mother of a little baby girl, Ashley. She has to take care of her and she had no money. So what happens is she gets into dining and bar. She started working as a bartender. But the money she was getting from all of these works were not enough to have a proper living. Now she initially started working in a strip club called Crazy Horse which was owned by a mafia, a mobster Jack Gallardi. Now this place was situated in Paradise and Flamingo. Eventually after this job she actually started stripping in another of the club of the very same chain called Crazy Horse Two, which was owned by one of his associates, the mobster's associate, Rick Rizzolo, who was eventually arrested in an FBI investigation operation called G-String. Now, what happens is when she was working over here and when she shifted to Nevada, she met this man whose name is George Cruz Diaz Jr. and they hit it off. They got married and Camille was immensely in love with this person. She even got a tattoo on the right side of her hip which said Cruz in her heart. Now, Ashley remembers of Cruz having an overwhelming presence in their lives, which she was really uncomfortable with and she was really frightened about it. Until now, she was actually doing drugs like marijuana or cocaine and she was smoking Marlboro. But after she got into with Cruz, she actually started doing hardcore drugs. She got really dependent on crack cocaine. This was also the time she actually started working as a sex worker. Initially, she would get engaged with people who were coming to the the strip clubs where she was dancing but then later on she even started going out on the streets. Now what happens is that the mother Barbara she decides to shift back to her home in Chicago along with the seven-year-old Ashley and they did not have any idea that this was going to be the last time they will be seeing Camille. Now between drugs and prostitution, Camille would oftentimes get arrested. She had this huge list, long lengthy list of arrest warrants. During this time, she also get really paranoid and afraid about her life. She would often share these feelings of paranoia and fear to her friends, but unfortunately she never did mention about it in detail. Also the last time she spoke with her daughter Ashley, she was some really off. In fact, the little girl Ashley could make out that something was definitely wrong with her mother because she was sounding as if she knew that she was going to leave. She was saying how much she loved her. She also said that she should be a good girl. This very much sounded like a goodbye. Now what happens next is that for one day she was right there talking to her mother and her daughter in Chicago and the next day nobody had any idea where she was. Seven months later, the mother Barbara along with the young daughter Ashley, they shifted back back to Nevada, Las Vegas so as to find out what's happening with Camille. Over there, they came to know that nobody has any idea when was the last time they actually saw her or what has happened with Camille. So what they do is they immediately go to Las Vegas Metropolis Department. They lodge a complaint. Now what happens is that the police officers are not so eager as to investigate as to what happened with Camille. In fact, they come up saying that there is no reason to believe that the missing person has met with with a foul play or any kind of suspicious circumstances. So the mother Barbara and the young daughter are left alone with no one to actually help them and what they do is they go out to search for Camille all by themselves. Oftentimes Ashley would find herself in the car in front of a strip club or a place or a store or somewhere that Camille would often hang out with her friends and Barbara the mother would oftentimes go on speaking with people who were any way any possible way were related to Camille to find out if they had any idea or any clue or hint as to where her daughter was. This keeps on going for a very long period of time and like I said, the police does not get involved. They did not do any kind of investigation. They did not even show any kind of effort from themselves. So in 2003, one of Camille's old childhood friend, Sherry, when she got to know about her missing, she contacted LVMPD. Over there, even the police officers then realized that it was a long period of time. It was nine years that there was no information on this missing person. So what they do is they file the case again. Yes, again. Why am I saying again is because mysteriously 
The case got deleted back in the 90s when it was reported just few weeks after it. Again, mysteriously, it got deleted. So in 2003, the case gets reported again, it's filed again, and this time it's put under endangered section. This thing should have happened back in the 90s when it was reported initially. And maybe there's a possibility that if it would have had happened, then maybe Ashley and Barbara would have any knowledge about Camille. So what happens is that again, the case is appointed to someone, but then there is no effort from the police side that in fact, Ashley gives some DNA samples to the police officers so that when and if they find an unidentified body, a Jane Doe, they might like to test with it. And any hopes that they had with the refiling of the case was met with dead end. For over one decade, Ashley is trying to find out any information. She tries to contact, she tries to call the police officers, mail them, and they do not respond at all. So Ashley, she decides that she cannot live this way. She cannot live without knowing what happened to her mother or where was she? Was she alive? There were so many questions going around Ashley's mind that she decided that she would indeed not lose hope and do her own investigation. So she started off with a couple of her friends. They were investigating. They would meet these people who were anyhow linked to Camille. Now then again, remember that we are talking about Las Vegas where people do not tend to live there for a very long period of time. They have this nomadic lifestyle and after decades, it would be really difficult to resurface all the evidence or any kind of hints or clues that they might have had back in the days. So like I said, they started investigating their own from a very small friend circle it became into a proper team where a lot of strangers and a lot of people started offering their help. Along with came a lot of possibilities and theories that might have happened. One of them is that, that some believe that Camille might have left the state or in fact the country because then again there were so many arrest warrants against her so she might have left or she might have changed her identity she might have changed her name to Nicole, Renee or Kim and with surnames like Clark or Dodson she could also have a different name altogether but then it is believed that she would go with these names another possibility is related to the man whom she was living with at the time of her disappearance so she was living with this man Francisco Kiko Fernandez she separated with Cruz and she was living with this man Kiko at 2110 apartment number 26 at Paradise Road. Now with this man we don't know if they shared a romantic relationship or what kind of relationship but they would often get arrested. For this one instance the neighbors of Kiko and Camille they complained about these noises that was coming from their apartment and it sounded as if someone was beating someone. So yes the police comes into the picture they inquire Camille if she was hurt or was she getting abused. They enter the apartment and and there they find drugs. Though the drug, the brown bag in which the drug was placed, it had the name of Kiko, but still Kiko along with Camille were arrested together. And this happened on 2nd of September, 1994. On 3rd of September, 1994, they were released and they were asked to come back for arraignment hearing on 26th of September, 1994. Now it is said that 3rd of September is the last time that she was actually seen when she was leaving the prison. Now, like I said there was a hearing on 26th of September that she was supposed to come and since she did not so the police officers believe that something might have happened between 3rd of September and 26th of September but what is strange is the fact that according to the police records she was missing since May 1994 in fact they had her in September so how was she missing since May that is a huge question now it is a very good possibility that Francisco Kiko Fernandez is the man behind Camille's disappearance. The reason why we say is now during the estimated period time of her disappearance she was living with this man and this man would often go back to Cuba or to Mexico and it is very much possible that he could have helped Camille leave the country. Also another thing that I would like to mention about this person Kiko is that he had a lot of charges for domestic battery one or two which also specified of strangulation so yes he was a violent person and there is a very much possibility that he might have killed Camille. Now let's talk about the husband Diaz. Now the reason why I'm saying Diaz as the husband is because even after they got separated and she went on missing for 25 years he never along this period of time filed for a divorce which is very strange. Now there could be reasons because he wanted to show the world how dedicated husband he was etc etc 
etcetera but he was indeed a very violent person and there could be a reason that he did not like the fact that Camille left him and went to another man and he couldn't digest this so he went ahead and did something very horrendous with her now during the investigation Ashley was tipped by one of the friends of Camille that she might have been murdered by one person or bikers and they would have buried her body in the desert so as to silence her because they thought that she might know a lot about criminal activities of the gang this could be a possibility but then again we don't have physical evidence but we have to keep this in mind that she was working in a strip club where these biker gangs would often visit now during the investigation they got another tip by a friend that said that she was actually spending a lot of time with a cop now this cop was not a good one he was a very dirty cop who was supposedly pimping out girls now we don't know what kind of relationship they had but it is said that it was supposedly special now i don't know what is that supposed to mean but anyways she would often get picked up by him and they would spend a lot of time together it is also said that this police officer could be officer william burks who was actually convicted of trafficking drugs now then again we don't have any idea now remember that i said that she was working in these strip clubs which was owned by mafia and mobsters so there is a possibility that she got under a bad radar of these mobsters and eventually they found her suspicious or threatened by her existence and then they killed her now i would like to add a point over here that a friend actually said that she was often approached by local police officers so as to become a confidential informant of these mobsters now we don't know if she was working with these people or not or did she agree to this or not but it is a very much possibility so you know like we see in the movies that often times these innocent people get involved with the police officers and the mobsters or the mafias they feel threatened by them so they kill them that could have happened over here now sherry the childhood friend she was going going through Camille's phone book and she was dialing all these numbers she was expecting that she would find any kind of lead in this case so she eventually got to the number that was under the name of Dimitri and that number was of FBI so was Camille working as an informant for FBI we don't know it is possible but then again we don't have any evidence like this is a case where there could be so many possibilities there are so many theories and all of them could be very much possible now with extra information with any little more information we can come into conclusion as to what has happened with Camille now this is one of the reasons why i really wanted to cover this case i was actually approached by gabriel who is directly connected with the investigation of this case and i'm really grateful for her i really want to thank her for giving me this opportunity for trusting me with this case now one thing i would like to add over here is that usually it's seen not only in the states even in india in fact i feel like it's happening all across the world that people who are linked with drug addiction or who are sex workers often times that when there is a possibility that they might have met with some criminal activity the police or the law enforcement they don't care or they don't show any effort from their side for investigation i mean even they are people their lives value as much as anybody else's over here and yet they do not show any effort from their side and this is one of the reason why this case still remains unsolved now during my research i was suggested an article by gabe which quoted Paul Farmer which said that the idea that some lives matter less is the root of all the things wrong in this world and i definitely agree with this one be it a drug addict be it a sex worker no matter what choices they have made in their lives does not mean that their lives matter lesser than anybody else's be it a priest or a police officer or a sex worker anybody if something wrong happens with them then it is the job of the police officers of the law enforcement to take the right step here i come to the end of the case and like i said nobody has any idea about camille during the time of her disappearance she was said to be 5 foot 7 inch tall and 125 or 145 pounds also she had brown hair hazel brown eyes and her teeth were supposedly discolored because of lot of consumption of drugs she also had a broken nose thanks to cruise violence now if you have any idea about any woman who looks like camille who you think is camille 
Like I said, she might have changed her name. She might have changed her identity. So if you know anyone that has any kind of resemblance to her, please contact Ashley and her team. I would obviously put the contact details in the description box. Also, there is a Facebook page that is dedicated to find Camille. Also, it would be really grateful if you could share this video with people who might have lived in Las Vegas, Nevada during the time of her disappearance. It would mean a lot. One information, one right person could literally solve this case and help a daughter find her mother. Here I come to the end of the video and if you found this video interesting, informative and if you like the video then hit that like button. Also share this video to your friends and if you can find any information regarding Camille then do contact them please. Thank you so much. Take care of yourself and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.